All right. Oh, a new document. Um, so the image I sent you is this guy. And we're going to take him and, and prepare him. And if it's your own drawing, we're, we're going to you know take your drawing and prepare your drawing. We're going to come back to that in a second. So we're just going to, first I want to make some brushes that I can use that will help me um, kind of move along and get some ideas. So I want to create some kind of brush that will give me some shapes and kind of scatter them out so I can use those maybe in the background and maybe to just create some kind of cool effect in the kind of <coughs> behind the drawing. So <clears throat> you can pick whatever brush you want, but I'm picking a, uh, and this is all up to you, there's no right or wrong way to do this, but I'm picking a really plain, boring brush. So it's, uh, if I make it larger, it's, it's just black and um, there's no opacity. It kind of tapers off to like, you know, whenever uh, the pin pressure is on, but super basic, right? So I just want to use this to create some shapes. And I want some uh, <coughs> geometric shapes. So I'm going to come over here to the menu on the side, and I'm going to select the rectangular marquee tool. And I'm going to come down here and click the layer icon for a new layer. <coughs> and I'm going to hold shift, and I'm going to pull out a circle, uh, I'm sorry, a square. If you don't hold shift, it's a rectangle. And you don't have to do a square, because it's, it's like I said, it's up to you. Um, and I'm going to take my paint bucket tool and just <coughs> fill my square. And I'm going to deselect it by, you can go up to select, deselect under the menu, or you can press command D, control D. So now I have a new layer with a square, and I have my blank background. <coughs> Uh, control or Command-T, and you're going to transform it. I want it to kind of be like a diamond shape. And you can, you know, like I said, you do whatever you want with the shape. You don't have to, there's no right or wrong. And I'm going to take the white from the background. I'm just going to start cutting out some, I'm going to cut out little bits here and just, I don't want it to be like an actual square. I just want it to like start from that. It doesn't really matter what exactly I do. If you have an idea in mind, just you know, do that. But are you doing erase or are you doing white? I'm doing white. It doesn't. It doesn't matter if you erase or if you do white. Uh, when you make a brush, it has to. The the brush selection it takes into account like if it's black or gray or white. So as long as it's, if it's white, it doesn't appear. If it's black, it appears. If it's gray, it's gonna it's gonna translate into your brush as a transparent. So like you got to make sure that if you don't want it to show up, it's got to be white. And if you want it to kind of have like a uh, more of a, a looser effect, like if I if I came in here and did a, let me do a new layer real quick. Oops. If I came in here and if I made a brush like with this whole thing, it's gonna pick up that gray and say, oh, you wanted the like you wanted the gray too. So you got to make sure there's no gray. Excuse me, black or white, unless you want. I mean, if you want that, you can have that, but. For this case, I want it to be straight color or no color. So wherever there's white, there's no color. Wherever there's black, there's going to be color. So I'm going to go up to the menu again. So rectangular marquee tool. You can press M if you want to use the, the hotkey. Just select your, you're just going to select the whole shape, right? And you can get tighter if you want, if you want to come in here and get nice and tight in. Um, you don't have to give it so much. Uh, so much room. So here we go. Now we already did this before. Edit, define brush preset. Oops, sorry, that was pattern. Define brush preset. It's going to say, what's the brush name? So we're going to say, like, test. And, uh, okay. So now I'm going to delete the shape and I'm going to deselect. Uh, Command D or Control D. So you go to your brush menu, and make sure you have brush selected so you can, if, if the menu is gray, it means you don't have your brush tool selected. So B, and it reactivates your brush panel. You can scroll to the bottom and, oh that's right, it doesn't show up here. Okay, same thing. At the brush menu, we're going to scroll down to this little button here. 
click that, it says open the preset manager. And right at the bottom of my preset manager, you'll see that little shape I made. You can just click it and select done. Oh, it should. It's okay. <laughs> it's not working. Here we go. One more time. With the brush tool selected, go up to the top underneath Photoshop. There's a drop down menu. Scroll to the very bottom and you should see your brush. Okay? There we go. So. Huh? So you uh, come over here to the menu, select your marquee tool, select, edit, define brush preset. Name it whatever you want, and then uh, delete, you know, clear your canvas out. Because once it's saved, it's saved in there. You don't need to save it anymore. I'll just say the word saved. Hmm? What was that? If it's gray, it's going to read as like a, a percentage of transparency. If it's black, it's going to read as 100% opaque. If it's white, it reads as nothing. So I'm saying if, if you have gray, it's okay, you know, but with the brush tool, it reads that as like a transparent color versus uh, black and white, yes or no, you know, like completely opaque or completely invisible. So... <clears throat> Right now, the oops, the default for any brush when you make it is just makes it, you know a stamp, so it stamps out, and you can you can draw with the stamp, and it just repeats the damn shape over and over again. So we go to the brush menu. It's under Window Brush, and it'll open up this little menu here. And we have all these, remember, we have all these little ideas, we could, little ideas, these little attributes you can play with. Your shape dynamics, you can turn that on and off. Um, transfer, scatter, and you can already see it affecting my brush here on the bottom. I think, let me see if I can increase that. No, that one doesn't work. It's all right, so I want something that's going to scatter the shape around. So I definitely want scatter selected. I'm going to click on the actual name to activate this little customization window. And it's going to say, do you want to scatter it on both axes? And I can turn that off, and it, it'll, I'll see what it changes. It, you know, If I scatter on both axes, 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 axi, if I scatter on both axi, is that really right? Oh, okay, well, <laughs> um, you know, it's going to just affect it differently. So we can keep it on both, and we can just kind of play around here and see what it looks like. Turn it off. Almost the same. Um, so I'm, I'm not too concerned with both or not both. Uh, let me turn down the scatter, and it's going to make it a normal brush stroke, right? If we turn up the scatter, it's really going to start separating our shapes. And if I don't want that many shapes, we can turn down the count, right? Okay, it's axes. That's cool. Yeah. Axes. Cool. It just says axes. Axes as. Anyway. So, all right. You get the idea. So, if you want more, we can boost it up and we'll see how much that, you know. I'm just I'm just adding layers, guys. I'm not deleting anything just so I can If you're wondering what how I'm clearing my canvas, I'm turning off a layer and adding a new layer. So, that's like a maximum scatter. So, you can kind of see what it's doing. And see how it's uh, it's kind of creating a line, like right here it terminates on this line. So if I turn on scatter with both axes, it just actually make, it makes more of like a spray. So let me turn, let's, let's take a look. It's kind of like a random scattering, and that's like a lot. So I'm gonna turn it down. I want to maybe take it like maybe two. I just keep adding a layer. I'm turning off the old layers. You can delete them if you want. It's up to you. Just remember to add a layer. All right, so I kind of got the scattering. Uh, they're coming in at random sizes, it appears. So I'm going to go up to Shape Dynamics because I don't want them to come in at random sizes. I want them to come in based on what I want, it, you, know, you know, my uh, customized features. Do you have the control set to anything in scatter? Control and scatter? Yeah. Mm. <coughs> oh, uh, 
Uh, yeah, it's set to pin pressure. So you can also turn that on or off. Turn it off and see what it looks like. So it's just it's going to be a random scattering. If I turn pin pressure on, it'll uh, increase the count. Shape dynamics. Here I'm going to turn off pin pressure. So uh, it shouldn't... There we go. It shouldn't... Oh, let me turn it off. Yeah, there we go. Now it's not going to affect the size. You see, they all come... Actually, it still looks like they're sh shrinking it. It keeps turning it back on for me. Off. Off. There we go. Okay, so what I just did is I went up here and I clicked this button. It's uh, it's the the button says always use pin pressure for size. So I turned that off because I didn't want to always use it. Okay, so now now it's doing all the same shapes, all the same size, just scattering about, right? And uh, let's activate the shape dynamics now. Now now that I've turned off this always use pin pressure, I can really play around with this. Uh, if I want the angle to change, I could rotate the percentage up. So now the shapes are going to come in different angles. I could turn it down if I wanted to be all the same exact shape. So the benefit of having them all the same exact shape, let me turn off scattering. And let me go up to brush tip shape right here at the very top. Click that. And we can affect the spacing. So I'm going to turn the spacing up. Okay, spacing is all the way up to where you see each individual stamp. It's at 124%. Let's go back to shape dynamics. And the angle, I could turn the angle to a uh, direction. And it's going to travel in the direction my, my pin moves. <coughs> so the benefit of not having a scatter on is I can create pattern lines now. And I can even... move it along the brush stroke so I can completely affect the shape. And you see the power of this now. And the power of this comes in with uh, brushes like the one I showed you before. There's the, the chain brush. So you make two links of a chain. You make two links of a chain and you stamp down this you stamp down a link and a link and then you go into spacing and you can like when you first stamp it, it's going to look something like this right and then you got to make it space 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 you space it all the way out until you start seeing a chain right about here and now you've got like a automatic chain right if you're trying to if you need to use that for your your piece for some reason so that's the that would be the reason why you want to activate this direction and why you want to affect the spacing because it, if I if I activate scattering, it kind of loses the whole purpose of the chain brush. It just becomes a bunch of like keys floating around in space. What is the direction? Directions under control, angle jitter. Like it says angle jitter, you can say I want it to the angle to be controlled by the direction. And yeah, under shape dynamics on the side. Uh, it should be direction. And then there's initial direction, which the difference with initial direction is that you're, you know, let's see, initial direction. So I'm going to do a, a mark down first and see how they're all facing down. And if I go up, they're all kind of facing up. And if I switch it back to direction, it's going to follow each move I make, it follows it. Right? So that would be the difference between those two. Why would you want, you know, one versus the other? Um, so, okay, so here's, here's where I would use these st this kind of stuff. So for, let's go back to my image. So this guy, I'm going to cut him out from this background. And I'm going to probably put some kind of geometric shape behind him. Maybe repeating geometric shapes. I kind of want lines to kind of be like, let me, let me just show you by drawing it. Um, let me switch my brush. <coughs> you don't have to follow along with this. I'm just showing you. Um, so I kind of want lines to be like this behind him, maybe. And maybe a circle even like that, some kind of lines repeating. So if I go back to my blank canvas, my blank canvas, the reason I have this open is so we can make a brush. 
D to reset your colors to black and white if you need to do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pick out my rectangle marquee tool. I'm going to make a thin line. Click on my paint bucket tool. Click in the middle. Turns it black. And before I deselect it, I could go over here to edit, define brush preset, and just you know use it that way. So it's sampled brush 20. I'm just going to put line. I'll just delete that, deselect it. You, you know, like I said, Command D, um, and open up the. If you right click or Control click with the brush tool activated, you can open up the drop down menu, or you go up here to this top. This top is the same menu. It's up here at the top, underneath Photoshop and uh, scroll all the way down to the bottom. The new brush you always you make is always in the bottom. You'll see, look, the brush is the exact same size as the rectangle I made earlier. So if you want your brush to by default be smaller, you need to save it smaller to start, or you can go into your, your presets and, let me open up my little brush, oh, it's up window, brush, um, brush tip shape, I can shrink the size by default if I crank it down to like 25 or let's say like 60. See what the straight line does? It's kind of like a calligraphy pen. And that's just the default setting, right? So if I wanted the lines repeating, we're going to have to increase the spacing. I'm going to go all the way to 1,000. Now I got the lines repeating. I'm going to increase the size up to 100. You can see what I can do now. And you hold if you hold shift and make a mark with your brush tool, it, it makes a straight line. In case you're wondering what I'm doing. So see how this is behaving, right? And another layer. The shape dynamics. I'm going to turn off size jitter. I don't want the size to change, but I do want it to follow the direction of my brush stroke. So I put on direction. Let me put this back over here. <coughs> and now we've got our our line tool that our line brush that creates a custom line pattern repeating in the same interval. Where's it's underneath shape dynamics. And it'll say uh, I think believe it just says direction. No I'm sorry, it says uh, angle jitter. Okay. So shape Go to the drop down. Look on the look up here on the screen. The drop down menu underneath angle jitter, directions. Yeah. Huh? All right. So I got my line tool set up. Now the thing about me setting up this brush tool here is that if I switch my brush now to something else, and then I go back to the one on the bottom, nothing's changed. You got every time you adjust your brush and customize it, you're basically save, making a new brush. So you got to go back, do your same thing, right? Brush tip shape, back to a thousand. Shrink the size down, maybe two hundred. <laughs> and uh, right here at the very bottom of this menu, there's a little the little uh, note page here. You click that, and it's going to save the new brush. So you say this will be my line brush for this project. And I'll close this. I'll shrink that down. And now if I go to my little menu here, you'll see it at the very bottom. It saved the original versions up top and then the new versions in the bottom. And you can see how it's repeating the way I want it to repeat. And you can go back and delete these, right? Um, you select the brush, you put delete brush. Delete the brush? OK. So and there it goes, it disappears. You, now I just selected it too. No? Oh, well. That's kind of like a flaw. If you, if you select the brush to delete it, it gives you the brush you wanted to delete. Mm -hmm. So like, like still holding yeah, even though you deleted it. So clearly you didn't want it, but to, to like I guess make just it. make it again. Yeah. Anyway. All right. So anyway, so I got my line tool. All right. I want this for the dude. And I want, I want maybe like some kind of repeating texture uh, that I can use with the brush. So let's just let's go up top to my little airbrush here. 
It doesn't matter what brush. You can pick whatever. I'll pick this harder brush here and just, just show you. It doesn't... I'm, this time, I'm just going to make a mess. It's just 100% black. And I'm just going to mess around here and do whatever. It's just like a little scribble. <coughs> now, we're going to go up to Filter, Blur, and I'm going to pick Gaussian Blur. And then we're just going to crank it up to like 200. Maybe a little further down. 70? 70 is good. 76. Is that okay? So it's blurred my little image I wanted. And now I want to just... I want to add another blur. I'm going to go ahead and blur. And I'm going to use a motion blur this time. And I want the motion blur to blur in the direction I'm going to use the brush. So I want to... For the sake of this, let's change the angle to 90. And... I'll increase the distance to like 430. That's good. So it's, it's kind of blurring it up and down a little bit. Click OK. Now, same thing. Get your marquee tool. Select your shape. Edit. Now, the, okay, the other thing I can do here, let me deselect that. So I've already showed you how to select it with uh, the marquee tool. You can also go down to your layers bar. Let me increase the size of this so you can see what I'm talking about. You can go down to your layers, click in the icon, in the actual little window here, and hold Option or Alt. Oh, I'm sorry, is it Command? Command, or what's the, what's the windows for that? Select or one. To pixel select? I hold Command, but you don't have Command, right? It's, it's control, for control, so you're going to click Control. Control, click your your window and it's going to automatically select all the pixels on that layer. Mine selects the entire layer. Oh yeah? Hmm. If you don't have any pixels on it, oh, that's because you're trying to say. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's it. it. It only selects, so if I go up here to layer two and I click do the same thing, it's going to select only what's on that layer automatically. So if you've already been working in layers and you wanted to like outline a, like a character, that's already on its own layer, and this will work for your characters. And you want to do it really fast, and you don't want to sit here and like, you could do this. You'd be like, uh, do, 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 go around and select this. That that works, but you could just go down here, hold uh, Command or Control, click your layer window, and it's automatically selected, right? So it's just speeding up the process. Now I'll go to File. I mean, sorry, Edit One. Okay. Just delete this layer. Oops, delete, delete, delete. Deselect, select all. Just clear the layer off, anyway, okay. So like I said, go to your, click on your brush tool, scroll down to the very bottom of the window, you'll see your new little brush here. If I stamp it, you'll see what it looks like. Kind of that same cloudy thing I drew earlier, right? Back to the brush menu. Okay, so let's go to the brush tip shape, which I'm already I'm, I'm already on it, but you might need to click to the top up here. <clears throat> I want to change the, like I said before, I wanted the blur to be in the direction of the brush. So I'm going to have to turn my brush, because remember the blur is up and down. But if you look at the window, it's stamping my brush side to side. So I've got to rotate the brush by clicking this arrow in this little window here. I'll rotate my brush. There we go. You see it turn in the window. There. And I, or I could just type in 90. Remember, we did 90 degrees before. So 90 degrees. So it's rotated 90 degrees now. And the spacing, I'll turn down the spacing a little bit, but I don't want to turn it down. Click on texture. It automatically opens up a little window for you. If you click on this arrow at the top in the little square, it's going to drop down a uh, texture menu, right? So these are a little textures that are available for you to use. I'm trying to look for some dots, like some polka dots or something. And you have a little gear. The gear will automatically load other textures that Photoshop already has uh, loaded, right? I don't think I've loaded any textures on here, so I think these are all default. So I'm going to go to patterns and see what they've got. It says replacing the current patterns with the pattern. Do you want me to replace the patterns with the new patterns? Oh, yeah. Okay. Save changes? I don't care. 
Okay, so now they have the new patterns. Here's a checkerboard. Uh, okay, so you can kind of see it. Let me zoom in a bit. Oops. It's really slow. It's like taxing my system. <laughs> All right, let's zoom in and take a look at what's going on here. You see this little checkerboard pattern that's been formed? It wasn't there before. All right. We'll start seeing how this pattern is affecting. Ah, uh, woo! Zoomed out too much. Uh, my brush is really big. I'm gonna s turn my brush down to like 100. I'm gonna delete that layer and just uh, okay. Just delete that layer. Okay. This texture one's taxing. Oh, you know what? My system's being taxed because I'm recording the screen. That's why I was doing it. All right, so that one's not really... Oh, hold on, I'm zooming out way too much. The more effects you add, the more processing power it's going to take up. Yeah. <coughs> so keep that in mind. Turn off smoothing. I don't need smoothing on. Um, I want to scale up this texture. <coughs> you can see on the bottom how it's affecting the, the brush stroke. And I can turn the brightness up. And there, it's like a straight on uh, checkerboard. So now I can just, I'm actually just painting with the texture. It's, it's so one for one. I could invert it. And that doesn't seem to do much. Let's try out a new one. I still wanted circles, so let's see if there's a circle one. Patterns 2. Append. Append will add on to the list. What's this texture look like? Let's invert. So go over here. You can adjust the scale. You see on the bottom of the brush stroke how it's adjusting the pattern? Or you can adjust the brightness. If I turn it down, it becomes regular brush stroke. If I turn it up, yeah, it almost becomes entirely the pattern. Mm -hmm. And let's see here. I'll just do this checkerboard pattern here. That's going to be this little, whatever this is. Brightness. Or it doesn't. Okay. Um. Hmm. It must be a new thing, yeah. This, I mean, honestly, I have never ever use this. I'm just doing this for the sake of the James Jean thing. I never, <laughs> I never use the texture on the, <laughs> on the texture brush. We'll use in different patterns. So here's here's the other thing we're gonna do. If you want, I'm just gonna pull this up. You don't have to do this, but I'm just gonna do it. Um, dots. Uh, half. I'm gonna type in half tone in Google. Half tone dots the sake of speed and here we go going to image I'm just going to pull one of these let's see uh, this one you can create your halftone in Photoshop but because I want the internet to go really slow I decided to go to the internet here we go Visit page. No, visit image. Here we go. Just gonna save this copy image. <coughs> Let's see. Paste. Here's my halftone. I copied and pasted black and white halftone onto my Photoshop document. I'm gonna turn off the layers around it because it's on its own layer. And then I'm gonna click uh, Command T or Control T to increase the size. Now I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to take my marquee tool. And since these are all rows of dots, I'm just going to select one row. Hello, hello. I'm selecting one row because I'm going to recreate this pattern with a brush. Edit. 
Define oh. brush preset. Okay. I'm just saying okay because that brush is going to – remember the first brush you make is deleted because you, once you adjust it, it becomes a new brush. Let's deselect, um, Command-D, delete that layer, and let's create a new layer. Find the new brush you made. Remember, you got to have the brush open. The brush tool needs to be activated. Here's my new brush on the bottom here. See the dots? So it stamps dots. That's all it does. It kind of creates an interesting little shape here. But I don't want that. I want like a, a matrix of dots. So let's go to the brush panel like we did before. Go to brush tip shape. And I'm just going <coughs> to increase the spacing until it looks like it's... There we go. Let's test it at 130%. There you go. It's like the halftone we just said, right? I'm forcing the one the one line I selected to recreate <coughs> the halftone. The great part about this, in this case, um, is that I don't know if y'all noticed it, but the halftone I selected had a, a watermark on it. I, I deleted it, but <laughs> here we go. I'll paste it again. So this halftone has a watermark on it because you're supposed to <laughs> you're supposed to buy it, but. Since I just needed to use these dot, one set of dots to create this on my own, you just select what you need from it, delete the rest, and then you have your... I have this pattern I can use now that's just the same as what we just copy and pasted. All right. <coughs> so let's save this brush now. Let's call it Halftone. And now let's actually go over to our drawing, and let's, let's go ahead and get to work on it. Does everyone have the drawing loaded? If you're going to follow along, make sure you have the drawing loaded. If, uh, if not... Don't worry about it. You can just watch it later and do this later. Close this document. I'm not going to save it. This is just the document I used to create brushes with. Okay. My file has been opened. So your file is going to look like this when you open it. Select all. Um, Command A. Oh, what did I do? Oops, undo. Command A, Command C. Command V. All I'm doing is copying and pasting a copy of the the drawing on top of itself. So you can see the two layers are activated with the uh, it's already large with the drawing in both layers. I'm going to rename this layer uh, working layer because that's the layer I'm going to really you know get to work on. And I can just click my mask. Activates my mask tool. Remember, in the mask tool, you work with black or white. And if it's not 100% white or 100% black right now, go ahead and change it to 100% change white, which is 0. 100% black is 100. Let's change our brush to something opaque. Back to the top. This, uh, If you have my brush set, it's the fourth brush down. It's just a circle. So... I'm going to start masking out, but because I copy and pasted the same draw image over itself, you can't see what I'm doing. So I gotta, I'm just going to put a layer behind it just so y'all can see. And you might want to do this too. Just In hindsight, just realize that you're not going to see what I'm doing. There we go. And that blue layer is just so you can see what I'm doing, right? So your options are you can sit here and uh, paint out the background and just, you know, Zoom in. Hold on, my cursor's stuck to my. There we go. You can sit here and paint out the background, or you can take your lasso. It's getting stuck. So whenever I screen record, it it, it does that more often. <coughs> okay, so. Take the lasso tool and start selecting your character. Or you, you can select the outside of the character. Scoop out. And then I hold shift. It becomes a plus sign. Select. Hold shift. Select. And you can keep doing that, right? So these are all the different options I'm giving you. And once you have everything selected, you click the paint bucket tool and it erases everything, right? <coughs> Um, you can also hold down your drop menu for the lasso tool. Let's go to polygonal lasso. 
You can zoom in a bit. And this will allow... Oh my god, it keeps getting stuck on there. Alright. This will allow you just to click and uh, drag your selection. The only issue is it okay, just now I messed up, so I'm, i got to go back and close it. If you mess up, it, it's a little more tedious. So you, I'll select this area. Yes. I'm sorry, what? The mask is so I can cut the character off the background. So I. It's like making a stick. Because when I was on it, it looked on me like my brush was on On the mask? Uh huh. Hmm. Your brush tool won't work? It should work. So, Carlton will help you. Is there an advantage of putting the purple layer versus the backslash button? Backslash button? I'm sorry? Is the backslash button on the mask? The advantage is I didn't know that feature existed. So you just told me that I didn't know that did that. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, you could just click on the mask and click the backslash button, and it shows you the mask. There we go. So that, that advantage I didn't know that. <laughs> I don't normally do this kind of work. I just paint straight into Photoshop. So <laughs> yeah, that's much better. Just click on the mask. No, no, no. Click on the mask. Click the backslash button, and it shows you your mask. It's beautiful. It's a way. It's a much easier way to do it. Um, all right. So anyway, I'm going to come in here and just mask out pretty quickly. I don't really want to. I'm not going to go. Let's just clean this up really quick and dirty. Um, if this is your real work, you know. Get in, zoom in there, and spend time cleaning it up. But for the sake of this demo, I'm gonna go pretty quickly. I'm not gonna be completely perfect with it. Uh, what was the issue? Oh, so uh, the same. So the, the fact that you had a blue layer in between. If uh, if anyone was making a, uh, a mask over the same image that's underneath, it's just going to feel like nothing's happening. Yeah, yeah. That's so, what. That's why I put the layer. Yeah. He can keep that original drawing. Because if there were way more effects or a background or something or just the sky that he wanted to mask out, then he has the option to do that now without changing the actual drawing and making it look like a cheap photo manipulation. So I'm just going to select the major areas, knock it out, and then come in and cut out the close areas. And this, uh, this happened here. Um, it closed off my path before I was ready, so you can just hold Option or Alt to deselect an area. Cause I don't want to cut off his head. You, you, you hold it to activate it. As soon as you click, it'll stay on the it'll stay on the minus sign. You don't have to you don't have to hold the whole time. You just hold it for the initial click, and then it'll continue. Likewise, if you want to add, you you uh, hold Shift and click. But once you've done the initial click, it'll you know, it'll go back to, uh, it'll stay open. Unless you have the lasso. The lasso and the polygonal lasso are slightly different tools, so. What was that? Yeah, yeah, the contrast isn't boosted enough. You could boost up the contrast to use a magnetic lasso. Um, but it's up to you. I mean, it's up to whatever gets to the whole point of me telling you all the different options is that there's no right way. It's just. Some ways are faster, some ways are slower. Um, if you click the mask and hold backslash, you know, like I was doing the exact same thing that uh, Kelly was telling me to do, but I just kind of created the blue layer so I could see what I was doing. But Photoshop already knows that you want to do that kind of stuff, so 
You just click backslash and it showcases the mask for you. I think it's a quick mask mode. No, maybe it's not. Quick mask is different. Quick mask does the marquee selection. All right, so just finish cleaning up your image, you know, knock out, get close in. With this, if I, if I go over the edge, it's all right. And uh, we'll adjust. So like the reason I want the gray paper, the reason I do this guy in gray paper is because I want to have that paper texture in the final. If I had the white, if I had white paper underneath, it would have, uh, I would have lost lots of my detail. So now, but if I had white paper underneath, I could have just added a paper texture at the end with Photoshop. So like there's, you know, like I said, there's many ways to do what we're trying to do here. And I, I don't have a plan with this project right now. Like what, what I'm doing here today is just like, we're going to kind of play around and see what happens. Um, so that's what I encourage you to do too. I mean, you can plan out your drawing ahead of time, but actually you should plan out your drawing ahead of time. But in this case, I have a loose idea what I want to do. I'm going to colorize this guy. I'm going to add a little more lighting to him. I'm going to add a background graphic and I'm going to throw in maybe some kind of other design that I might paint in myself. <coughs> so you finish your selection. We're almost done. Do you save your selections? You can save your selections. Um, I normally just, you can save your selections, but I use, often when I'm working, I just use my mask as my save selection. So I'll go to my mask, <coughs> I'll right click and I'll say add mask to select. That's my way of saving selections because it just automatically you know does the selection anyway. But saving selections is a lot more efficient. If I had to really like work with a big file, I would save selections. What was that, Abby? Um, I was just wondering, every time you like select and delete something, do you just do deselect? Yes. You deselect because you're gonna you're you're creating a new you're selecting a new area each time. If you don't, I mean, you can add to your selection the whole time. You can just keep adding to your selection if you want. You don't have to deselect. Um, here we go. Now we're done. All right. Uh, click back on the main layer. It looks like nothing happened because, like I said, there's a layer behind it that uh, is the exact same layer. So I'm just going to add a layer on top of my background layer just so y'all can stop seeing the same thing over. And I'm just going to fill it with white. There we go. So there. That's what we just did. We cut him out from the background. Um, because I have this guy already selected down here, I'm going to go ahead and commit my mask. I'm going to apply my layer mask. So now he's just a dude on the background, right? Um, and I wouldn't do this if this was the only, you know, I duplicate those to kind of check, uh, double check. Um, double check that I don't ruin my image or something. So <clears throat> I want to colorize them, so I'm going to add a new layer. Um, you can hold option and hold your cursor between the two layers. And it turns into a little square, and that's the clipping mask. Or you can... Control or right click the top layer, not the bottom layer. Control or right click your top layer. And you can say create clipping mask. And it'll automatically sync to the bottom layer. And with the top layer selected, I'm going to go to the drop down menu, scroll all the way down to color, and just let go. So now it's color clipped to. Yeah. Select whatever blue you want or whatever color you doesn't have to be blue. Um, and now I can paint whatever I want into this guy. And it's not going to go outside of him. So I want to paint. Well, I want to paint his whole. I want to paint the whole thing blue. So let me just paint bucket tool, which is G for the paint bucket tool. You click over here. And uh, he's a little, like, very, very blue. So I'm going to turn down the layer to, like, 50%. Maybe even a little more, maybe like 
Now he's kind of lightly tinted blue. He wasn't before, but now he is. And I'm going to add another layer. I'm going to clip the same layer. I'm clip down to the same layer. So it's going to look like one layer with a big you know, train of layers on top. And just so you know, if you have your bottom layer, if I set this to multiply, which you can't really tell, I did it. If I set it to multiply, every layer you clip to will kind of have that same effect. It won't, it won't be a normal. So if I go over here to overlay, this layer will behave differently. Whatever layers you're clipping to your bottom layer, we'll call the bottom layer the mother layer. That layer affects everything else. So I want to make sure that my bottom layer is set to normal. That way, whatever I do on top of it will behave normally. Yeah. The, the color layer, the reason we choose that a lot for a lot of our working processes is it will actually only change the hue of the uh, object underneath it. It won't change the actual shadow pattern or the values with those cells. So if you use, for example, a multiply or an overlay layer, which would change the shadows, uh, it would actually darken or brighten these light and dark areas of Mike's drawing, um, which he may not want. So when he just uses color, he actually still has the exact same value structure, which is more important than what colors you choose, because we read values clearer than we do uh, color. Because when he turns on the color layer, that has the same value. It looks brighter and a little more uh, insane and stuff, but it what it's doing, we're keeping our value structure that we wanted and that we decided upon in the first place. So when you have a simple drawing like that and you decide upon that value structure, like a, uh, and when I say value structure, I mean the fact that he's got a ring light behind him and he's mostly dark on a white canvas. Um, he's not losing that effect. So all of the, whatever light that we have uh, that we're deciding on, uh, whether we want it to be a blue ambient light, if he's at night trick-or-treating, then we can keep that original drawing uh, the way we had it without manipulating the way it looks overall. Alright, so if you're watching this video, I don't know if you heard any of that, but what Carlton said was <laughs> the uh, color layer doesn't affect the values, it only affects the hue. Um, if I switch it to multiply, it darkens the image Overlay boosts the contrast, which may be something I want, may or may not. For the sake of this demo, I want to stay on color. I didn't want it to be so blue, so I'm going to turn it down 30%. Now the new layer I added, I'm going to set that to multiply because I want to go ahead and uh, strengthen those shadows. And just, uh, I want like a green. And I'm just arbitrarily picking green. There's no reason to pick green or not pick green. You can pick whatever color you want. Uh, so, yes? How I what? I'm sorry? Oh, how I committed the mask? Yeah. You right click on the mask or control click. You could right click because you're on a or, uh, PC. And uh, you'll see it says apply mask. But once you apply it, it deletes everything. So you can't go back, right? So you don't have to cut, cut them out completely, but once you do, you know, that's it, um, unless you undo it. But if I were to close my document and reopen it, it's gone. <clears throat> so, yeah, Dwight. Why are those layers and things like that? That's the clipping mask. Uh, you have a Mac, so hold Option and put your cursor between two layers, and you'll see the cursor change, and then click it. and. Uh, Make sure that they're clipping to the character, not the character clipping down. Or a blank layer. Or a blank layer, right? Because that was the issue we had earlier in the class. Abby, you had, you had the same issue with your carrot. Or you got to make sure you're clipping to the layer you want. Um, so, multiply layer. I'm just going to paint in. Uh, the light's coming from behind him, so I'm going to add in some, <coughs> some shadow to the front of him. Just kind of loosely. I'm not going to make it perfect or anything. 
right? You can do whatever you want to. Right? You don't have to do this shadow. This, for the sake of this demo, it's it, if this is your artwork, you know, do whatever. Um, I'm just showing you what how, you know what you can do and how you can affect it. And if you haven't already looked at that book I brought, it's the James Jean Fables covers. Uh, the reason I brought that in is because it has his process photos, so you can see where he began with his traditional drawings or paintings and where he took it digitally. Um, so in my case, I'm going to add some stronger lighting. I'm going pretty basic here. And we just keep it, I'm keeping it loose just for the sake of the demo, right? So like if this were my real, my real art or something, I'd probably just zoom in, kind of make it a little more precise. But in the end, if you're only ever going to see it zoomed out like this, you don't need to zoom in 200%, right? You're wasting your time zooming in t to this close and making it perfect if you're only ever going to see it like this big, especially for print. If you're going to print it out for some reason, no one's ever going to see it that zoomed in. You don't have to worry about it. Okay. All right. So now, <clears throat> same thing as before. I want to tone it down just a little bit. I don't want it to be that dark. And by toning it down, it's going to bring in more of the blue. And... I want to use my eraser tool, and my eraser tool is going to be set to a really soft brush. I'm just going to go in and kind of soften the edges with the eraser. Right? All right. All right. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, adjust the overall levels of this drawing a bit. So. We're going to use this button here. It says adjustments. If you don't see it, you go to the window, adjustments, and it'll open up the adjustments. I'm going to put cur I'm going to click on curves. It creates a new layer above all my other layers. Curves. Uh, hold your cursor over it, and it'll say curves. It should be the third one on the top. Okay. Clip it. Clip it down because I only want to affect the drawing. And you can adjust however you want, right? I'm going to pull down to increase the contrast. And if I want to darken it more, I push in the black. If I want to lighten it more, I push in the white. I don't want to lighten it anymore. All right. That's all I want to do. It's just adjusting them slightly. So if I if I click the eyeball, you'll see what I've done. I boosted the darks a little bit. I'm sorry. What? That the adjustment layer is a new layer. Adjustment layers are a whole new. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Adjustment layers are a whole new thing. <coughs> every single layer underneath it. Yeah. Um, that's so really yeah. So we we're, we're clipping it because I just want to affect the drawing. So now he's just a dude <coughs> on nothing. So I want to throw in a background. Um, just for the sake of this, I'm just gonna I'm gonna select like a kind of like a paper color, like an off white, and darken it just a little bit. I'm going to click, you know, G or click on my paint bucket tool to drop in the background color. So it's off white. He's him on off white, okay? Um, let's see. I want to shrink him too. I don't he's kind of taking up the whole page. So if you click on the layer that says working. Actually, is this going to work? Oh, wait. You got to select all layers. You got to click on the bottom layer that's clipped, right? Go up to the very top hold shift and click oops sorry not click on the layer is it you had to have everything selected right now click command t control t 
you're going to be able to transform him now. So I'm just going to shrink him. All right. The reason I selected all the layers is because I want that shadow layer that I painted in, I want that to shrink too. If I don't do that, the shadow layer is going to stay big and he's going to shrink and it's just going to mess up my drawing. That's why I selected all the layers. All right. So he's a little dude running. And we're just going to select, you know, click the top layer, scroll down to the bottom. Remember the title of this layer is working. We named it working earlier. Hold shift and click. I, you've probably done this with any like any documents. Normally you had to hold shift and click to like select a range of documents on your computer or something. It's the same thing. I'm just going to put everything in the folder. And I'll just title this boy or whatever, right? Whatever you want to title it. We'll close it. So now he's... Everything is inside the folder, right? There we go. So, <clears throat> what you can do is you can continue adding layers and clipping to the folder, and it's going to affect everything inside the folder, right? So that's what I just did. I added a new layer, and I created a clipping mask by holding Option or Control-click if it's a Mac, right-click if it's a PC, And if you're not, if you don't see create clipping mask in the menu, it means you're clicking on the icon and not the layer. And it's really confusing and it confuses me too. I don't know why. So I, if I click over here by the name, it says, uh, you know, uh, where is it? Create clipping mask. It release. It's released because it's already created. Release clipping mask. If I want to make the clipping mask, it's not going to show up if I click on the icon. It's only going to say, do you want large thumbnails or not? So you gotta click off to the side. All right. Uh, with this layer, I want to kind of add like a kind of a gradient to him. So I want the color to. I want the color to fade from. Wrong one. I want the color to fade from the top to bottom or the bottom to top. All right. So remember, we have the clipping mask already clipped. So if you're going to be working on this layer. Just go over to the paint bucket tool, hold down your cursor, select the gradient tool. The gradient tool, the first color it selects whatever you have opt open in your uh, in your palette. So right now, if you look up at this, the top left, you're going to see this hot pink color. That's because I had you know had the hot pink selected. I don't want the hot pink color. I want. <coughs> let's do like a. a kind of a turquoisey color and let's make it a little darker and I'm just gonna hold and drag so you know you see how he's fading now to like a blue and I'm just gonna play around with the layer blend modes and see what looks interesting there's no right or wrong in this at this point just see what you like so we already know the top four darken or really five top five darken the next five lighten and these affect both the lights and darks equally in some way, right? So overlay is going to, like I said, it's going to push the lights, push the darks. And they're going to start getting a little weirder in terms of the mathematics behind what's going on. Not even the professionals that we are friends with or that we would recommend demos to really even understand what some of the layers do or use all of the layer effects. If you really want to know, I'd say your best bet would be to Google. Like, we use screen or lighten a lot, but I personally, I couldn't tell you what lighten and screen is doing to the pixels um, in Photoshop. It's a math equation. Right, it, but I, I know that I like the effect as the artist. So, I have a question. Yes. How did you, when I clicked, when I did your clipping mask, the green? Yes. It just then when you try to do a clipping mask to your yeah, group. I did it above my group. Mm -hmm. Like it looks like green, but my whole screen is too green. Was it a, uh, let me check. It might not have clipped then. Did you put all of the layers below um, into the group? I think it was too mm -hmm. 
All the what? I'm sorry. All the layers of the group besides yeah. the background layers. Yes, yes. Everything besides the background layers in the group. Let's just keep things organized. Yeah. For my preference, whatever you're working on your own, do whatever you want, right? You don't have to do that like that. It just keeps everything kind of orderly. Let's see. So I noticed there was one I liked. Was it difference or subtract? One of them created like a pink color I kind of liked. This one. It's kind of creating, so I don't know, it's turning like the, his legs are kind of like, it's exclusion. It's kind of turning his legs kind of like this pinkish color, and then it gets darker, and it gets to the top. I kind of like that, so I'm going to stick with that. Like I said, I don't exactly know. So it's exclude something with exclusion. It's doing something where it's excluding a color or adding something in somehow. But I don't really like the tan on the background, so I'm going to click on layer 2, which is my background color. And I'm going to click on Command U. Command U is going to throw up this hue saturation. And now I can just toggle between the hue and figure out which one I really want to go with. Is it working? Yeah. Oh, it's just uh, the kids in the layer. Oops, let me close it. The kids in the layer. All the things with the kid are in the layer. The background's not. <coughs> Why would the layer above my group not be flipping to the view? Mm, I don't know. I wonder if it's because I wonder I wonder if it's a CS if it's a CS6 thing. If using clipping masks were uh wait, well, let me just adjust this background real quick. Adjust the background. We'll just pick a blue. I kind of like this. I, I like blue. It's my favorite color. But Tone down the saturation. All right. We're holding slightly. So now the next step is to let's name this background just to I'll put BG for background. We're gonna add one more layer. We're gonna name this shapes. Commit okay, so now we're on the shapes layer. Now we're gonna go pull in those brushes we made earlier. I'll scroll to the very bottom. Let's take uh, let's take this repeating line tool you wanted. Increase the size. Because it's blue, I want to use orange, just because orange is opposite of blue. What was that? What was the issue? It wasn't giving him the option to switch to the Oh, it's just not. Okay, so that might be a CS six thing. Oops, didn't quite do it. Here we go. Now I'm just undoing the strokes. If I mess up, I undo. So uh, it's the remember the brush I made earlier. I'm just arcing my hand and just creating this little circle, right? So we got him, little circle. Um, let's add a new layer. Uh, let's say, okay. I'm gonna put the new layer on top. I'm going to call this layer uh, halftone. Oops. Just select it like almost. Yeah. <laughs> Deselect everything. Name this new layer halftone. Oh. Halftone. <laughs> It's like sensing my uh, command key for some reason. Here we go. Halftone. Name it halftone. <laughs> there we go. All right. <coughs> Let's plug this back in. All right. So now we're going to go to the halftone brush we made earlier. Let the tablet wake back up. There we go. 
drop down menu remember it's at the top uh, left or you can control click with your brush tool it has to be with your brush tool or else it's not going to show and then uh, I've got my halftone brush selected I'm going to increase the size of my halftone brush a bit uh, yeah, my computer is being erratic there we go increase the size and let's change it to more of a red and okay so right now the brush is going to just repeat the half tone across I kind of wanted to do the same directional move that the other one's doing so I'm going to go turn that on we know how I do that because we go to the brush menu from window brush or you click on the little can of paint brushes and that we go to shape dynamics and the angle jitter has a word control which is a drop down menu you can hold this and you click on direction let go close the menu so I'm gonna do the same circular swiping motion I did before I'm just gonna like I'm just arcing my hand and it's gonna follow the direction of my hand there you go didn't quite do exactly what I wanted so I'm gonna undo one more time I'm gonna start off the canvas there we go arc it's a little closer one more time let's see if I get it yeah, it's skipping a little bit so one more let's see we shrink it just a tiny bit yeah. there we go that's close enough <laughs> all right so we got a starburst kind of in the uh, created with half tones. We got some lines. Um, I'm gonna go through the layer blend modes and see what I like. Color dodge lightens everything. Linear dodge, it's another way of lightening. Let's do hard light, maybe vivid light. Like I said, there's no right or wrong here. It's just figuring out what you like. Pin light. Difference. Difference is always going to add the opposite color. And then same with uh, exclusion. Exclusion and difference are very similar. Subtract. Divide. Kind of like divide, but that kind of changes the whole color. Let's go back up to color dodge. I like the way it was brightening it. And uh, if you control or right click, this is a little more advanced right here. If you control or right click on your uh, your layer, there's a title right at the top here that says blending options. You can open that and basically this is like a more in-depth way of telling Photoshop how you want the layers to behave with each other. So in this case, and I don't know why it does this, and it's the same reason, the, the way I heard it was from an artist's video, so I'm going to tell you the same way I heard it. Just unclick these whenever you select color dodge because it just looks better. And it's a really subtle difference. And I'll, I'll duplicate this layer to show you the difference so you can see it. But uh, if, I, if I turn these back on, here's one mode. Turn it off. Another mode. I can actually, let me just move them to the side. <coughs> actually, you might not even see the difference in this. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, typically it looks better. Um, I'm just used to doing that. So, all right. And with color dodge, with color burn, with linear dodge, with linear burn, and with linear light, pin light, hard mix, vivid light, the fill and the opacity are different in terms of what they do to the layer. So I'm going to turn down the fill on my color dodge layer just a little bit. The line, yes. Click. Uh, let me hold the get the brush tool active. So you want the line one. <coughs> it's just the shape dynamics with the angle jitter set to direction. And I've gone into brush tip shape, and I've increased the spacing to a thousand. Like you don't, you might not have to go to a thousand, but you got to increase the spacing to where it's repeating. If you're not getting the like the stamped kind of look, yeah, do you have a on? no. 
It's just a hundred percent. It's basically just a repeating stamp that follows the direction of my brush. And uh, all right, so the next step here, I could go in. I could go in with just another brush here. I'm just going to select something up top, and uh, taking the green from his his face. Actually, let's do the let's do the orange. I could go in and paint like some kind of a floral pattern or something something that's kind of coming off the background but uh, for the sake of time we're going to use uh, a photo texture you don't have this photo texture I'm just going to show you just real quick what you can do file place I'm just going to navigate to a file that I previously downloaded and throw in the texture. So you would find a texture online and download it. I have mine here. And I'm just going to select, I believe it's under uh, film. Film. Uh, these are, uh, I found these online. I think I just Google search like you can Google search grungy film or dirty film, and uh, oh no, don't don't Google search dirty film. That's gonna come up wrong. Uh, grungy film or texture. texture. <laughs> Make sure it's texture. Don't just go dirty film on Google. Um, these are high res scans of a, a old type of film plates, and I love them because they don't really look like anything. You do you, if I didn't tell you what they were, you wouldn't really know what they were. <laughs> what is going on here? Yeah, it, it is. It's, it's automatically holding command. Let me unplug this thing again. I commit and undo. <laughs> it doesn't normally do that. Okay. Undo. Let's do that one more time. Place. Now you can do this with any pattern, right? I said a floral pattern, and I don't have a floral pattern because I've never needed to use a floral pattern. Um, so this is good. You could drag and drop. I like to place it because uh, it, it it's kind of like using a mask. It doesn't commit right away. You can kind of uh, customize it. I'm just going to fill the screen with this texture. And it's actually, remember, it's behind the dude. It's not, it's not uh, directly in front of him. Press Enter. And uh, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's called a smart object. I just placed a what Photoshop calls a smart object. And uh, it's basically, a, it's, it's sourcing the original file into Photoshop without copying and pasting the data. So I can't like paint on here because it's not actually there. It's just telling Photoshop, there's a file over here that you need to access. If I want to paint on here, all I gotta do is try and paint and it'll say, smart object must be rasterized before proceeding. Edit contents will no longer be available. Rasterize the smart object, say okay. And it rasterizes. Now it's in Photoshop. Uh, I'm just gonna adjust this blend mode to like vivid light maybe. It's looking kind of interesting. Pin light. Kinda like pin light. Hard mix. It's a little too much. Well I can tone it. Let me tone down the fill, see if it changes anything. It's not really enough. Let's go back to uh let's go to color burn maybe. Color burns okay. Tone it down more. And now it's up to you. It's up to you with how you want to blend it. Soft light works. Soft light will give me a subtle, a subtle overlay. <coughs> I like soft light. Like I said, this is all up to y'all in terms of what your project is. But just play with those blend modes, and it's going to really give you some different ideas. All right. Um, I'm going to stop the screen recording right now if anyone needs to take a quick break. Um, 